Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today's content is actually a viewer suggested video. A little while ago, I put out a post on YouTube asking for video ideas and suggestions of things that you guys might want to see. Someone mentioned that they would like to see all my camouflage type plants that I have in my collection. So that's gonna be today's video. I'm going to start off with my absolutely gorgeous Diefenbachia reflector. This one I've had, I think since 2019 and I actually had two of them. One of them I killed, I think I overwatered it, uh, but I really haven't seen this plant in any plant shops around here anyways, or even online, uh, something that would be uh, affordable uh, to purchase another one. Uh, this one hasn't really done a lot the first couple of years, but now the plant is starting to size up its leaves a bit more. They're always just remaining as a smaller leaf and every time they put out a new leaf, it would drop a leaf. So it's kind of got a little bit stretched out but now it's getting a little bit more fuller on top and the leaves are getting much larger here as well. So this one I'm really excited for. It did have kind of like a little side shoot or sprout, which uh, I cut it off and I uh, propagated it in uh, my perlite prop box and I have since potted it in some soil. I think this has been growing for about a year and it, whoops, my chair again. It is super tiny. So far, no variegation on it, no speckling or anything like that. I've kind of steered away from Diefenbachias in general, just because they are pretty susceptible to spider mites. I do have, I think three different varieties, no, four different varieties right now, but I am not going to be buying any more of these types of plants just because they're spider mite magnets. So far, I haven't really had any issues with this one. Actually, that's not true. I did have, this is the one that I actually had thrips on. Uh, a couple of years ago and I had to cut some leaves off. Okay, so sometimes I forget things. But yeah, this one's doing really good right now and I just can't get over the green, uh, like the lime green and the dark uh, variegation on this leaf. It is just one of the most beautiful Diefenbachia leaves that I, th it's just my opinion of, of course, but I think this is one of the most beautiful Diefenbachia plants there is out there. This next one I got off of Facebook Marketplace and it was sold to me as the Homolamina Selby, but I'm not entirely convinced it is an actual Selby. It might be a camp, like a Homolamina camouflage. The leaves on this are just absolutely stunning. This is my third Homolamina Selby that I've had. Uh, I did purchase uh, two smaller ones a couple of years ago and I really didn't know much about the plants themselves so I definitely provided the wrong type of care. I put them in smaller terracotta pots and I watered it when it got dry. That is basically the complete opposite of what I should have done for this plant. This one is very similar to a peace lily. They do not like to dry out at all. Uh, they will get very droopy, floppy leaves. It will be fine in the morning and then you come downstairs or I mine downstairs under these grow lights. I'll come downstairs and I will find the leaves just completely flopped over just simply a couple hours later. And when you give it a good soaking, for the most part, it does respond or recover quite quickly. Like within hours, it'll perk right back up. Uh, very similar, like I said, to a peace lily. But if you consistently underwater it, then you will have some issues of uh, dry, crispy leaves, which again, I've gone camping a few times this summer and it's it's been droopy a couple times. So I've been trying to keep a, a little more consistent watering routine for this one and it's been doing really well. It's been pushing out some uh, new leaves. I may have to repot this one here soon, but I just can't get over the leaves. So the difference between the Selby and the camouflage is obviously the camouflage will have more of that camo pattern. So more of the darker variegation, whereas the Selby will have a lot more of the lighter green um, with a very, let's see if I can find a leaf. It, it's, uh, see, I'm, I'm thinking this is a Selby or sorry, a camouflage, because if you look at photos, I'll see if I can uh, leave a photo up there comparing the two. But uh, the Selby, like I said, has a little bit more of the lighter green uh, variegation on the leaves where this one has um, quite a bit of that camouflage pattern. Now I have had some people say that this is just a highly variegated or it has quite a bit of a pattern, uh, but this is a Selby itself. I don't know. Uh, regardless, I still love this plant. The foliage on this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm trying to find some more uh, homolaminas as well. Uh, since I've figured out how to grow them properly, they're just, they're very beautiful plants. But unfortunately right now, this is the only variety I have. 
and if you can find it, I highly recommend these uh, homlamina plants. Uh, just don't let them dry out. This next one is the Colocasia mojito. I am new to Colocasias, but in regards to care, they're very similar to a Alocasia as well as a Xanthosoma, so I'm not uh, concerned about how to care for it as I've kind of figured it out over the last a year or two. Um, this one I actually bought from a uh, local plant shop. There was only, I think, one in stock. And uh, when I brought it home, I put it outside and it really didn't do well. I know these guys like a little bit more on the higher light side. Um, I could be absolutely wrong with that, but that's just kind of what I read about these colocations. Uh, but it really didn't do well. I know right now outside where I am in Canada, once it gets kind of later in the season of spring and kind of like that early fall, when the temperatures are still really hot, uh, we tend to have thrips outside. So when this one was outside, I cut off all the leaves. I brought it inside here and put it underneath a grow light for a little while. Plus now it's on uh, the floor underneath my Soltec grow light and it's actually on a heat mat and it has put out three leaves probably in the last, I would say maybe three weeks or so. Uh, this one is dying back, which uh, this is the oldest leaf, so I'm not too concerned about it, but uh, look at these two gorgeous leaves. The coloration, uh, the, the pattern, the speckling on it is just absolutely gorgeous. This is a, uh, a super cool uh, colocasia. The leaves, they're like paper thin, they're like tissue paper. So I, I don't know how these can uh, withstand that higher light. Uh, but like I said, I could, uh, could be absolutely wrong. I'm still learning about colocasias themselves. So if you have any um, like care tips for these types of plants in regards to light and that sort of thing. I know they like a well draining soil, but they don't like to dry it out. So very, like I said, very similar to an alocasia or a xanthosoma. But if there is anything else that uh, you guys do for a colocasia, uh, please leave it down in the comment section. I'd love to know how you guys care for this uh, specific plant or colocasias in general. Do you grow them inside, outside? But yeah, this one, I hope it gets uh, large uh, mojito leaves. And even the stem is really cool. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but it's kind of two-tone purple, uh, like very dark purple with kind of a little bit of, uh, oh geez, that chair, striking or uh, streaking. <laughs> but uh, even the stem is gorgeous on this one. I have this little stool that I'm sitting on and, and the, well, the seat, <laughs> it's, the screws fell out and I just, I haven't put the screws back in. So every time I get up the, uh, the seat just kind of flips. Okay, back to the plants. Um, yeah, I really don't have much else to say about this one. If you find these plants, uh, they're a little bit more on the rare side. I, like I said, I don't see this very often where I live here in the Canadian prairies. But if you see it, pick it up. Really easy to care for. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about this one. Now I'm going to move on to a couple Aglaonema plants. I'm going to show you the Pictum tricolor here in a second. It's probably one of the most popular uh, camouflage plants out there. But other Aglaonema varieties are not really known for camouflage type leaves, but there are a few different varieties out there that do have that camel pattern on it. Uh, this one, it didn't have a label on it, but in doing some research, I do believe this is the Aglaonema Juliet. And if you look at the leaves themselves, it has kind of that three tone color green. So it, it does have a camel pattern on it. Of course, it's just, it's not one of the more popular ones out there. This one I've had for a while. Aglaonemas are one of the easiest houseplants to care for. And I keep saying, in my opinion, they're one of the most underrated houseplants. If they need water, they might get a little bit droopy. They might uh, drop the occasional leaf. I don't really do much for these plants and they just keep looking good all the time. They're not really susceptible to the like crispy edges or dry ends or anything like that. Uh, like I said, if you underwater it, it just gets a little bit floppy and then you give it water and it responds back, might drop uh, an occasional leaf. Um, but if you see a, an Aglaonema at one of your big box stores uh, and you don't have any in your collection, just give it a try. They, uh, they don't require a ton of light. They obviously do better and grow faster if they're in a higher light location. But if you have a kind of a, a lower light uh, corner in like your living room or bedroom, this is definitely a plant that I would recommend. Uh, for those kind of low to medium light and it just provides a nice tropical feel. Uh, some uh, types or some varieties have larger leaves. This one has a little bit more of a narrow leaf, but just they're absolutely beautiful plants. Easy to grow, easy to propagate. Uh, once they get a little bit stretched out, then you can just uh, chop the stem. It will branch out. I just made a video on that uh, a couple days ago, so you can go check it out. I'll leave the link at the top corner, uh, one of the corners here, but yeah, I, I just can't say enough about these Aglaonemas. 
This monstrosity is my Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor. I did struggle with this one for a little bit. It's a little bit more finicky than uh, any other varieties of Aglaonema in the sense that this one requires a, quite a bit more humidity or it likes humidity. So that's why I kind of fabricated this uh, little dome here. Uh, these are actually from Costco <laughs> cheese wall containers. Um, so I just cut the top off this one so it can grow into here. And then I have the plant growing out of the top of this one. The crazy thing about this plant is the price recently. A couple of years ago, or even last year, these plants were going for like three, four, or five hundred dollars um, yeah, and they're super rare. Whereas this year, I know in my one of my local plant shops, they were selling them for like $80 and they were not selling. So uh, some of them looked a little bit on the rougher side. So they were marked down to like $40, like 50% off. So I did buy another one uh, from my original one. Um, my original one, I didn't pay three or four or $500. I actually did a plant trade uh, with a plant friend. Um, so yeah. I do have a, a few other cuttings in, in this container, which I'm rehabbing because like I said, I didn't really provide it the proper care. It would get a leaf and it would drop a leaf. So I decided to uh, chop it up and I propagated it in my perlite prop box. I'll show you here in a second, the cuttings. Uh, one of them is doing really good. It looks like it's getting a branch off the side. So it was just a little experiment. Uh, it really didn't look good. Actually, I think it had root rot as well. Um, just because I was providing uh, too much uh, or I was watering it too much. So I didn't have anything to lose. It was rotting anyways. Popped it in my uh, perlite prop box. They grew roots and I have now since potted up in some soil. I just, I, I can't get over these leaves. They're just absolutely beautiful. And some varieties that I've seen out there have uh, white uh, variegation as well as the kind of lime green and darker green. I'm kind of playing around with the, uh, the grow lights and its position uh, amongst the, uh, the lights there just to see how the newest leaves come out, if it's uh, highly variegated, um, if light has anything to do with that. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of uh, playing around with that and I'll show you here um, the, uh, the new sprout coming through. It's tough to see on the sides just because I did spray it off this morning um, and it's not really focusing, but you can see this guy has a little bit of a, a branch starting right there. So that should start into a, an entirely new vine. There you can see it right there. Uh, the one over here, the top kind of rotted a little bit, but it's, it's not dying back or anything like that. So it's not rotting any further. It looks like it's going to get a new growth point soon. And then this one right here, um, I don't see any new growth points on this one yet. And let's see if it's rooted. Yeah, it's not, it's not budging. So it's definitely rooted. Uh, so yeah, these propagated uh, portions are, it looks like to be a success. This one's definitely getting some new growth. But uh, yeah, what an absolutely beautiful leaf. And this one down here is, oh man, this is sharp. Uh, this one right here has a little bit more of the camel variegation on it. Uh, these newest ones, or this one, is uh, looking gorgeous. Oh, man, just every leaf is just slightly different. They're absolutely beautiful. If you can find one of these at a decent price, they're really not hard uh, to care for um, when you have them in a higher humidity um, location or a container. Yeah, these are just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that leaf back there too. The last plant I'm gonna show you guys is the Ficus elastica tanniki or tenica. I know there's a few different pronunciations of this one, but this is probably the most popular uh, camouflage houseplant out there right now. It's really affordable. You can basically find this at any big box store or specialty plant shop, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. This is a smaller uh, cutting or uh, plant that I have in my collection. I do have a large kind of bush style one upstairs in my living room. It's a number of uh, stems in one pot. That's how I bought it, uh, geez, probably three years ago now. And it's grown quite a bit. It's a large, massive uh, bush style plant. It is definitely one of my favorites. People that come into my house comment on this one quite often. Actually, I don't have very many visitors that come to my home, but everyone seems to like that large uh, ficus elastica. Really easy to care for. They just need a lot of sunlight. So if you have a bright sunny uh, area in your home, Highly recommend getting this one. I know there's a ruby as well. It's a very similar leaf, but once, uh, I think it's the new leaves that come out, 
they do have a bit of the red margins where the white is and as it uh, grows matures then they end up turning into more of that uh, kind of a whiter uh, variegation. This one, it doesn't have white, it's more of like a creamy yellow color, um, but geez, these are just absolutely gorgeous. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. Thank you to that viewer who suggested this content today. I really haven't seen a video specifically on these camouflage type houseplants, so I really appreciate uh, that uh, suggestion. And I do like to read all my comments and I respond to as many as I can. Um, yeah, thank you for all your comments and suggestions and that sort of thing. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching everyone. Take care, bye.